Okay, welcome back to another session of EL 164. Today we're going to talk about counters. This is the lab for counters. We're going to be uh, uh, going through the process of developing and understanding counters using the RS Logix 5000 software. So let's dive right into it. Okay, let's get right into it here. We're going to start with the same process as we always go through. We're going to go through and open up RS Logix 5000. Once open, we'll go ahead and go over here and go File, New. From there, we normally we again would select the proper controller as you can see I've been using the same controller over and over again so it automatically comes up with the correct one the 1769 L16 ER BB1B controller we are still at revision 20 so all I'm going to do is come in here I'm going to call this uh, let's call this uh, counters lab how about that something simple like that noting that uh, when I put a space in there the uh, the software automatically puts an underscore in there it does not like this um, throw something of that nature. If you remember correctly from the previous ones, we don't have any expansion modules. This is uh, this is a, uh, a unit without any uh, unit that I particularly have here on my desk does not have any expansion modules. We're going to create this under projects, so we're going to hit an OK for this. This is uh, the first process of developing a new project in RS Logix 5000. So here we are again. We've got uh, our counters lab is the name of our file. It comes in there and it even tells us the file, the, uh, the, the controller, the, the controller manufacturing number that we have right in the file name. It also describes that same information down here in the IO configuration as well as what we're connected to using the Ethernet. Okay, without well, any further ado, we're going to go next step in this is we got to what? We got to create some tags. So the first thing I'd like to do is go through and create some tags. We make sure we always control, we always create our tags on a controller tags. So let's go into that, create a new tag. I'd like to start with binary just because it's, uh, I like to work my way up. So I'm going to say uh, binary tag. I'm going to call this uh, over here a Boolean. I'm going to make that a dimension. I can make it 32. I just put a 1 in there. It automatically puts it to 32. So I'm going to hit 1 there. And I am going to go ahead and create an open new. So now I'm the next thing I'm going to go is an integer. Integer is going to be um, down here. I'm going to type in INT. And here I'm going to create 10 of those. Go ahead and create and open new, and then double integer. I just call it dint. It's already dint here. Come in here. Let's create ten of those. I'm gonna go ahead and create and open new. And next thing I want to throw in here is what a timer maybe. We might be getting into some timers again. So we'll come here. It's not a timer until what we say it's a timer in the data type. So we got to come in here in a timer, create timer here. And oh, oh, I'm gonna want maybe more than one. So I'm gonna put ten of those in there. So I got ten timers. Create open new. And finally, we're gonna create some counters. I'm gonna come in here and put counter. Uh, it's not a counter to what? Data type says counter, so we got to come in here and put counter there. I want 10 of those stinkers. Okay for that. And I think I'm going ahead and create that. So now if I come over here to tags, I should have binary, integer, integer, double integer, timer, and count. So I have all the tags that I think I need for this application. It's just good practice to start out creating your tags. That helps you organize your program a little easier. And uh, it's good practice. So we're just going to keep uh, keep following that practice throughout. Next step we're going to do is what? we got to take a look at our lab report. Let's take a look at the lab report and see what it's asking for today. So today 
we got our compact logic controller. We've got that. We've got an input-output module. That's a little push-button box that I've got sitting here to the left of me. That works pretty darn nice. I got my laptop computer and a Cat5 Ethernet cord plugged in. So my uh, all my connections are made at this point. Uh, so we got to set up and configure the compact logic controller. So we select new file, call it counters. We did that. So we've got our uh, counters lab. So I'm going to go ahead and do what? I got to establish communications every time. First thing I got to do when I when I um, uh, go on or create a new file with a processor that I want to talk to. First thing I got to do to get this information to that processor, I got to establish communications, and that's done under communications again. Who active comes into who active. That brings up this screen here. Now, because I know I'm under Ethernet 2, I'm going to go ahead and expand on Ethernet 2. And then if I wait a second here, you'll see one get an X in it. And the other one has got to be the last one I've got to choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this guy here. And then I'm going to go ahead and download that information to the processor. Now, if there's any configuration issues, whether it's a tag problem or a wrong processor selected, anything of that nature, my download will not take place properly. It'll come back with errors. But because we have been doing this for a while, we're getting pretty good at uh, getting the right information downloaded to the processor. I know this simply because I get the green light for run mode, I get the green light for control OK, and I get the green light for I OK. So it tells me that everything is good at that point. So we're in pretty good shape here. So now what? Now we can start and go back to that uh, that, that uh, document here and see what we got next. We have developed the following logic: a uh, start-stop program, one normally open push button, one normally close push button to stop the program, an output light, and then the last piece of this is to use a counter to turn on the light after the button is pressed five times. The circuit is sealed. Okay, now what is all that about? Let's take a quick look and see what we can do here. All right, so first piece of this. We, we need to create logic that allows us to do a sealing circuit after we've pressed that button five times. So if you can imagine how we're going to go about doing that, we, the first piece of this is what uh, we could do. We can create the sealing circuit, or we could fool around with a counter. However, we want to do that. Typically, I, I like to start with the sealing circuit. So let's, I'll just go ahead and do that. Do the the uh, normally open push button, the normally close push button, the coil. Come back into here. Do the, the this guy here. Drop this over here, and put this guy in here. So this is going to be the start. This is going to be the stop. This is going to be the well, the seal and coil, and this is the contact for that seal in. Okay, without any further ado, we're going to drop right into this. We're going to come in here. We're going to grab an input. Let's see here if I can grab a normally open input. I want uh, on my uh, push button box here. I know that uh, my zero, one, and two are all normally open, so I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, let's grab two this time. And then for my normally close is going to be three, so I'm going to grab three this time. I see it's normally closed. As you can see, it's already green, so it's it's, it's indicating that it uh, that it is lit up. For my light, why don't we grab something different? Why don't I grab? I've got a. How about a light? Output three. I want to grab output three for this. And like I said before, it's always easier to cut and paste than it is to generate. So I'm going to cut and paste and drop that over. Bam. So now I've got start button, stop button, seal and circuit, and drop in down here. So now this is. Again, I, I know I got more work to do. I'm just creating the sealing circuit, and then we'll, we'll, we'll create more from there. So let's go ahead and figure out what we got going on here. See, I've got the eyes on the left here. I left us in remote run mode. Remote, uh, we're in remote run mode, meaning that I can do what online edits. That allows me online edits. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click this little button here. 
that uh, finalize all edits and programs. So it allows us to finalize the edits and make an online change. So bam, now that information has been transferred to the PLC now. So now the PLC is looking at this program and scanning. You can tell by the green line, highlighted green on both sides. That means that uh, the, the program is scanning this program. So if I close this first contact, which is uh, input two, I should see output three turn on, and I do. And then if I open or press I3, we should see it turn off, and it does. Okay, so we know we're in pretty good shape here. I got my seal and circuit working. We're, we're in good shape here. So the next piece of this is, let me grab this information over here. Use a counter to turn on the light after a button is pressed five times and the seal, the circuit is sealed. And the circuit is sealed. So now what do I got to do? Uh, see, I got use a counter to turn on the light after a button is pressed five times and the circuit is sealed in. So Right now, what I've got is I'm turning on the light immediately, right? I don't want to be turning on the light immediately, so that means i got to do some tweaking here. So let's take this light, and let's go here. We go here, we say edit run, or start pending wrong edit. Let's see how this goes for us. See, when I hit that, it switches us back to an I, indicating that... that we gotta. We are in this. This rung is in process. It's like uh, it's the, the modifications to this rung have not been transmitted to the processor yet. So we're 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 making these changes online, and we're doing it here locally on the computer. We have this information has not been translated to the PLC yet. Let's do some editing on this as well. We want uh, we want to make sure we are as clear as we can be on all this. So. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go main operand description. I'm going to go here. I want to call this start push button. And this, to be clear, I'm going to call this normally open, I'll just call it NO, NOPB, normally open push button. Then I'm going to come here. I'm going to do the same thing. Stop PB, normally close PB. Here, what I'm going to do is this is an output for a light right now, right? So I want to change that to what? Maybe say something binary. I could select integer. Let's go something different. I've always used binary. Let's go double integer. Let's go into here. Let's grab bit zero of that. Uh, you know what? Let's grab something fun, 31. Let's grab bit 31 of the double integer zero and bring that over here and let's call this uh, what do we want to call this let's call this uh, seal in circuit how about our uh, how about uh, on, um, I'll just call it sealing. How about that? Keep it simple. So now I've got this start button, this stop button, and the seal in. Let's see if uh, let's see how it responds when we download this. As you can see, I just grabbed, grabbed some random. It could have been binary. It could have been integer. It could have been a bit of, but it only can be one bit. It can't be the whole word. Remember. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button here. Two. And it works exactly the same way as the output did. So then I hit the, the normally close, I hit this stop push button, which is normally close three, and it drops out. So it works exactly the same way. So we're in pretty good shape here. So now I want to come in here and I want to create another rung of logic, right? So the comments here says I have to create a start stop circuit and use a counter to turn on the light after a button is pressed five times. And the seal circuit is, is sealed in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create another run. First thing I'm going to do is grab 
a contact here because I want to make sure the seal is in. I want to grab a push button here. I'll grab a push button, so I got to press some push button five times. So it's going to be some sort of input that I press five times. And then I want to grab that output. That output is uh, what did we? I think I used uh, output three last time, so maybe I'll stick with that. And let's see here. We got to use. Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab this and just sling him right on over here. And I'm going to grab another input. So just I'll grab some by some random input here. So let's see here. Data. I'm using two and three now. What if I use a eight? Just for fun. Something different. I'm going to go ahead and label this as well. I'm going to call this my counter. That's what I've happened to use just a a toggle switch for this, so I, I'm just going to call my counter toggle mm -hmm. button. It's a normally open toggle switch. Okay, so it's my counter toggle. So I guess probably most accurately would be call it a toggle counter toggle switch. How about that? So there's switch so we don't have any confusion here so counter toggle switch a normally open toggle switch I've got my ceiling circuit coming from this location and uh, this guy oh wait a minute I gotta toggle that not every time I toggle that the lights gonna come on right that's not what I want I gotta put a counter in here yet so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this I'm getting ahead of myself here let's go to counters let's see here timers and counters I'm gonna do a counter up I'm going to select the counter. Now, I, because I created my counters and my timers at the beginning, what? I've got a counter right here. Let's say I grab counter zero. Preset value of how many? So when I reach the value of what? Five. I want to make sure that the output turns on. So now when I toggle that switch five times, that done bit will turn on. Let's go ahead and accept this run. And maybe as to a description on this, this is going to be my count to five counter. All right, now, now I've got a sealant circuit, a toggle switch that I'm using to count to five. Now what I got to do is turn on turn on the light, right? Now I could just do simply when I get that done bit. I can just do that. So why don't uh, why don't we why don't we take a look and see what we can do here? So we're going to start out with favorites. Come in here, do this guy here, and this guy here. Because the toggle can only toggle on when the ceiling circuit is on, um, then that that point is the only time it's going to count. I could also add another contact in here and say, well, you know what? Draw a little bit. Is this ceiling circuit's got to be on before the light will turn on as well? So it doesn't matter. We can do it either way. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and make it the same. So, so that way it meets the requirements. It only turns on with the ceiling circuit on. So that's an easy one. Here I'm going to go over here. I can drag this counter over here. But as you can see, it takes the whole word. So I have to do what? I have to define it as a bit. So I want the what done bit. So when a counter reaches a value, the accumulated value equals five, that done bit, that output of the, the counter turns on and allows us uh, to, to transfer power from the left to the right, turning on this output. So here I'm going to grab that same output I grabbed previously. If I can get this to go for me. Output here, data, pull down. It was three, not you. What one did I use? Oh, what did I? Eight? No, three. Apparently, I didn't label. I thought I labeled. So I'm gonna come in here. Description. The output 
light. I'm not just going to call it. It's a light, so that's what it's going to be. Okay, I'll put light, and then all I got to do is come over here and say accept, and yes, I will download at that point. Okay, so now we're up to three rooms of logic. Maybe uh, it could be done in less, but I don't care. Three is fine by me. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to press what? Two. I'm going to press two to cl close the circuit and turn on the sealing circuit. As you can see with that on, both these contacts are in now, allowing me to what? Do my counter. So I grabbed a toggle switch eight, which comes in here. Notice how we're counting. Every time I close this, it counts up one, four, five, clicks on, and once the done bit turns on, what do we get here? We have this guy turning on the light. So now the light is on. Now if I wanted to turn off the light, I could hit the stop button. The light turns off because I turned off this sealant circuit. But the counter did not reset. Hmm. How do we reset that counter? Maybe it's something we ought to consider doing. When we hit the stop button, we reset the counter. That might be a good trick to try. So why, maybe what I'll do is come in here, add another rung of logic, keep it real simple, come in here, drop a contact here, and go back to timer counters. What do I got to hit? I got to hit reset. I can't just hit any bit. I got to hit the RES. It's got to be the RES to reset the counter. So now when I hit this stop button, I can have it do what? I can have it reset the counter. Okay, so I come in here, counter zero, drop that in there. I see a problem right now. Right now I see a problem because why? That is a normally closed push button, so that contact is what? Active all the time. If it's active all the time, what's gonna happen? That counter's not gonna be able to count. Let's just try it for fun. Let's see what happens here. When I go to hit the, if I download it as it is right now, as you can see, that is on. That means that reset is, is active right now. Notice that the accumulator belly went right to zero the second I made that change. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to hit that start button. Bit two. Bit two, data two. Okay, that comes in, seals in. Bam, we're good there, where everybody's happy. Now watch what happens when I hit toggle 8. I'm going to toggle it on. That counter does not move. Why? Because it's being reset continuously, non-stop. That bit is on. It is not allowing us to count at all. So what do I got to do? How do I fix this problem? How do you think I fix this problem? First thing that comes to mind for me is what? I would make this what? A normally closed contact. So let's go in here, right click on this and say start pending long edits. Come into here and click on this and pull down an XIO. So now I've got XIO in there. Let's go ahead and see how we respond now. So now I have nothing that this bit is not being turned on. So what's going to happen when I toggle this toggle switch? We should see an increment. Let's see what happens here. And we do. We see three, four, five. The light turns on. We are happy. Everything is good. So when I press that stop button, guess what's going to happen now? I hit that stop button and that re what's that counter going to do? It's going to drop back to zero. Bam. So uh, the requirement wasn't in the lab to reset it back to zero. Um, I added that uh, last second here just to, just to show how that whole thing ties together. So that is the first piece of this is, uh, is getting, developing a sealing circuit and a counter to turn on the light. And uh, is there an application like this? You bet. You'll see something like this for sure where uh, you have a certain number of count before, like say a die has to go in for repair, like I talked about in lecture, or a certain count that um, after so many cycles, a lube 
cycle has to take place. So you, you fire a valve to turn on a lube system. So, so you will see things like this on a pretty regular basis in industry. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the next piece here. Okay, so now we have completed the first step of the lab. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the screen here and then uh, we can start on the, on the next piece. So what I did, I just took it offline and then deleted all the rungs in the, in the program locally on the PLC. The uh, um, PLC itself is still running the original program we downloaded last. Uh, this is, we're going to develop new code here to cover the next piece here. This piece here is some, uh, we're going to do some more fooling around with the counter. So essentially we're going to set up a toggle switch to enable a counter up and use a push button to reset the counter. Uh, here I provided a, uh, a chart that you can fill out to, uh, to help you understand what uh, a counter is doing when the preset's less than the uh, accumulated presets equal to accumulated and presets greater than the accumulated value. What the accumulated value is doing, what the count up bit is doing, and what the done bit is doing. So, so without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and create that logic here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So we're going to go in here, put it on here. Create, um, create some information here. So. counter, counter up. I'm going to just grab some input here, so input da 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 data. Uh, heck, what am I going to grab? It's a toggle switch, so let's grab like something different, like 12. Okay, make sure I got 12 here. Yeah, it looks like that'll work. And for a counter, we can grab one in a counter we want. So let's grab a different one that we did last time. The preset, according to the lab report, is got to be equal to five in this case. So we're going to go ahead and set a value to five here. Accumulated value to zero. Okay. So there's the uh, the basic setup. Now the next piece of this is it says to add a. Uh, push button for re to reset the counter. So we're just going to throw in some sort of push button here. So I'm going to grab another one here. Go back to favorites. Come into here. Local one data input. The first eight are my push buttons. I want to normally open push buttons. So one we have not used. So Go in here, create a description for this. Reset push button PB. Normally open PB. Now I gotta do what? I gotta go back into counters, go over here to counter, push find the reset. Grab that counter nine and drop that right in there. Again, easier to cut and paste than it is to what? Generate. So now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create, uh, put some tag on this, call this uh, uh, normally open switch. So count toggle switch, normally open switch. And then this is just simply going to be my counter to, how about counter to five? How about that? Easy peasy, keep it simple. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be toggling the switch five times to turn on the done bit here. So, and then um, when the done bit turns on, uh, you guys can fill up the charts as needed here, as you can see how it responds. Okay, so now what I can do here is go over here, go download, because I got a program in the PC here. 
I got to send that message to this information to the PLC. So I'm going to go ahead and download this information to the PLC. So here we are downloading this information. Switch it back to remote run and we are in action. So now I have, as you can see, uh, rungs highlighted left and right indicating that the PLC is running this new program we just created. And now I'm going to toggle data 12. So should be 12 here. As you can see, I close it. It increments by 1. Uh, if you're following along in the lab report this time, you should be able to see when preset is less than accumulated, preset equal to accumulated, preset is greater than accumulated. You should be able to fill out this chart pretty easily. So we're going to go ahead and keep counting along. Four, five. What happens when we go past it? It just keeps counting. How about them apples? So yeah. So uh, as you can see, every time I close it, the CU bit turns on. The DN bit comes on. Let's take a look in, at the tags themselves. Let's see what's going on with those tags. When we monitor that counter tag, we're looking at counter nine. And I, um, I don't know if I can, I don't think I can show both the uh, logic and this at the same time. I don't think I can. Let's see if I can. Can look at that. So here we are. We're looking at this. We're closing this contact. You can see this that take place, and you can see the same information taking place here in the data table. The CU is turning on and off as I keep opening and closing that. The done bit is on, and you can see the accumulator value increment. Something that's pretty cool. I can come in here and say I want it to. I want it to be 36. I hit 30. Type in 36. Hit enter. And what? It reads 36 now. If I want it to read zero, I can come in here and put a zero in there, and it's zero. I don't have to hit the reset. Logically, it makes sense. But when you're test doing testing and whatnot, it's pretty easy to do right here. Also, look at here. I can change that preset right from this location. I can go say I want to change it from five to 50. Bam, done. I can change it back to 5, just by 5, enter. So, a lot of flexibility. Like I said, everything in the PLC is based off the data tables. Everything going on in the PLC. All the, all the information the PLC handles, all the information the, the, the PLC is using is manipulating data tables. So it's reading them, it's writing to them, it's pulling, it's extracting, it's it's using just the data tables. That's that's what it's all about. The latter logic is how the PLC allows us to program and uh, use this information in a format that we can understand, but essentially the PLC is using what we program to manipulate the data tables. So that's really, I mean, when you think PLCs, think data tables. Don't think ladder logic, think data tables. It's all about data tables. Anything that you need access to is through the data tables. You can extract information from any location in a data table and, and place that information elsewhere. And um, so there's, there's a lot of flexibility here. So enough on the data tables. Um, so here we are, we are. We're looking at the data table and the information all at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and increment this guy some more. I'm going to get, as you can see, we're pumping up here. Counter up turns on. And then the done bit turns on as we'd expect. Then I'm going to hit this reset push button, which is, uh, what is that? Uh, data one, so input one. When I press that button, the only thing we'd expect to see would be the accumulated value go to zero and the done bit to turn off. Let's see what happens there. And that's exactly what takes, takes place. So, so just like we anticipate, uh, when we can uh, we can increment past the five, we see the CU turn on as we'd expect, and the done bit to turn on, and then when we hit the reset, it drops back to zero. Okay. So well, uh, that should get us uh, the information we need to fill out this chart. 
the what uh, uh, when the done bit turns on ACC equals what when the done bit turns off ACC equals what so that um, that should be pretty straightforward to fill out at that point uh, develop the following logic for the counter down so the next piece of this I'm going to create the counter down so uh, I'm going to uh, clear the slate and start all over again all right I have a better idea. Instead of clearing the slate, why don't I just take this guy? I went, I went ahead and offline. I was going to go delete everything, but why don't I just do this? I'm going to wipe this out. CTU, switch that to a CTD, and we're in business. We've got our counter down set up right here. So now we've got a preset and accumulated values set to question marks. So that's why we got the E's over here. So our preset value is going to be what again? Let's see what our preset value needs to be for a counter down. Preset for the counter down is 5 as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 5 in there then. Accumulated value is going to be 0. So I'm going to go ahead and enter 0 for that. We're going to have a count toggle switch normally open. Again, we can use the same toggle switch and a reset push button here to reset to the counter. And we're going to learn something new about the counter down. Again, um, the counter down I mentioned in lecture is we have a problem where if I hit the reset, it doesn't bring the accumulated value back to the preset value. It brings it to what? It brings it to zero. <coughs> so that means the first count after a reset is going to be what? It's going to be a negative number. So let's just, let's just uh, take a look at what we got here and see what happens here. Go back online, go download this information. So now again, I've changed the modif I modified the information on the PL PC, and we're going to download that information to the PLC. So now I know I'm online, I see these highlighted green bars on both left and right hand side of my logic and can you guess what's going to happen when I press this toggle button 8 to 12 I can tell you what's going to happen it's going to do what go negative so it's going to keep going negative oh no that's not what we want right and when I hit the reset button what do you think is going to happen it's not going to go to 5 it's going to go to 0 Watch this here. We're going to hit zero, and bam, we're back to zero again. So the very first count value is going to hit is what? It's going to be negative. Okay, so like I mentioned previously, a PLC is all about the data tables, and we have access to all that information. All we got to do is find the, the address and the location of that information, and we can write whatever we want to it. So. In industry, and then and, and most applications, when dealing with counter downs, um, one thing you can consider doing is instead of not instead of using the reset, we're going to move some information in there. Now we really haven't discussed the move, and we actually get into moves in the next unit. But um, this is a good time to really share some of this information anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of go into this move thing a little bit here. So we have a function called move. I gotta be in edit, start, run, edits. Come in here, throw in this move statement. I'm gonna take this guy right out of the picture. Okay, so now, source value, I wanna put a value of five into this counter. What, not the word, not the counter itself, but into the accumulated value, right? We want this accumulator to read 5 every time we hit reset. So now what's going to happen is every time I reset, I hit that reset push button, I'm going to move a 5 into the accumulator. So what that's going to give us is a countdown from 5 to what? To wherever we end up. So we can still go end up negative if we end up with a, a countdown value of greater than 5, but we started five. So there we go. So let's take a look at this. 
So now I go here, I hit the reset push button, which is data one, so input one. I does it drops a five right in there. And then I hit this toggle of twelve. Two one zero. And like I said before, it will go negative. I keep going. But instead of resetting to zero, we reset to what? Five now. And now we're back to a positive number again. Now is a negative number bad? Not necessarily. But usually in a manufacturing environment, when you're doing an account of product of something of that nature, they don't really want to see negative numbers in product count. That doesn't look that looks confusing. You can't be making negative product, at least I hope you're not. It's uh, hard to make profits with negative product. So what they want to do is they want you to, you know, if you're counting, like, say, I think some of the examples in the lecture were uh, you're counting product going into a machine and product coming out of a machine. So you're taking a, you should toggle up to uh, for a product going in and you toggle down for product going out. So that, um, that, that number should be, you know, some positive value. Um, so just... Uh, as a uh, good example here, this is this is when using a count. This this would be a good application to where a move makes more sense than a reset. So, so let's take a look at this information here. We've got uh, to reset the counter. So I I, I kind of uh, showed a different way to reset the counter. You can do both ways. Uh, here you can fill out the chart. So. Uh, with the different stats of the uh, of the counter itself, uh, what is pre is less than accumulated and equal and then greater than, and then you can fill in the, the bits, uh, the the count up bit, the count down bit. You know what? I just made it. I found a mistake. That should be the count down bit, right? The down bit. The count down bit. So this should be the accumulated count down bit and the down bit. So. All right, so that takes care of that. So now we are um, looking at how the countdown bit works. Okay, I've reached a value or a time limit of uh, like I'm hitting around for 40 minutes right now. So I got to add a part two for this next piece of the uh, of the lab. So uh, take a look at part two. We'll we'll uh, we'll finish up the lab with part two.